from the heart of America, the nation's number one progressive voice, where truth and common sense rule. This is the Ed Schultz Show, where America comes to talk. You're listening to a rewind of the Ed Schultz Show. One of the hot videos out there is uh, that of Newt Gingrich. At a book signing in Minneapolis where hardly anybody attended. No, I'm serious. Both he and his wife were sitting down signing uh, Tiffany purchase orders. <laughs> well, no, they were signing books. But anyway, uh, some guy came up and poured gl- uh, glitter all over him to, uh, in, uh, <laughs> on one of the media websites. Mediate, it says Nick Espinosa, the guy who dumped a box of glitter on Newt Gingrich at a campaign event Tuesday, says the presidential candidate, quote, needed a makeover. And after all, glitter is fun. In fact, he says he's still got another box of glitter ready. He says that he'll use it Newt's next wedding. (laughs) So the guy had a sense of humor. Uh, Of course, he was escorted out quickly. I don't know if he got an autograph or not. Let me, let me tell you about another piece of video that I think is hot. And it's not the fact of what was said. It's the way Newt Gingrich responded. Now, this, I, I'm, I'm sure you've seen it if you pay attention to the cables at all. Gingrich was in Iowa and was apparently in, in a hotel. And uh, he's walking through and, and somebody confronts him about his, his comment about the Ryan budget. And obviously, this guy is of the flock. I mean, he's a righty. I don't know if we've got that sound bite or not. Yeah, we do. Okay, here's the exchange. A guy uh, comes up to Newt when he's walking through a a hotel lobby and kind of sticks it to Newt for going after Paul Ryan in the budget. Instead, ends up calling him an embarrassment. Here it is. Mr. Gingrich, what you just did to Paul Ryan is unforgivable. I didn't do anything to Paul Ryan. Yes, you did. You undercut him and his allies in the in the House. No, I said... You're an embarrassment to well, our party. I'm sorry you feel that way. Why don't you get out before you make a bigger you fool of yourself? I'm sorry you feel that way. Now, the videotape shows that Gingrich just walks away from the guy. And look, everybody ha- handles crowds differently. Gingrich knew the camera was there. All he had to do was turn, if he's really concerned about the American people, and if he really believes what he said was the truth, Gingrich should have stood there and just taken it from the guy and then tried to explain to him. Now, maybe the guy was just so obstinate that it was unreachable, and there are people like that. But I don't know, it just, it just, I, I, I just didn't feel good about watching Newt just brush this guy off. I mean, this guy's Republican. This guy says that he threw, you know, Ryan under the bus, and he's an embarrassment to the party. That's exactly the kind of people you want to engage in when you're a public servant. It's exactly who you, you, you want to convince people. You want to hear from people. You want to get real definition from them. And that is, my friends, the key word, because Newt Gingrich has never been about definition. Newt Gingrich also put out... Uh, when he had GoPack back in the 90s, he put out these tested words of how to describe your opponent, anti, what terms, what words to use, anti-American, anti-flag, anti-family, you know, uh, taxes, uh, cheat, uh, bizarre. I mean, he had a list of about 200 words that you had to work into your commercial that he said were tested to destroy your opponent. And, and I think that this is the kind of conversation that Newt Gingrich wanted to have in this country. No one knows him more from the other side of the aisle than this gentleman, Congressman Jim McDermott from Washington. Jim, good to have you with us here on the Ed Schultz Show. Well, it's good to talk to you, Ed. How are uh, things going? Go, things are going great. We've got more material, material than we know what to do with. <laughs> 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 and you know what? I, I think when you were on, on the Ed Show last week when we were talking about Newt, I think you knew we were going to have a lot of material, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not surprised, I'll have to say that. <laughs> uh, now, your thoughts on how this thing is on the verge of completely unraveling for Newt Gingrich so early on in the campaign. What do you make of it? Well... Uh, it's not surprising it because uh, 
Newt often talks, uh, he starts talking before he engages his brain. <laughs> and and that gets him out farther than he really, I think, means to be many times. And then he, then he uses the adolescent defense, what I call the adolescent defense, which is the one where you do what you're going to do, and then when your mom or your dad yells at you, you say, Oh, God! I didn't know you would. I didn't know you thought that. And you come back and beg for forgiveness. And that's really. I mean, he's he's going around the streets right now, begging for forgiveness everywhere he goes. Uh, he's he's now saying that he was set up on Meet the Press. I mean, the guy <laughs> the guy's been on Meet the Press more than the host. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it's always somebody else's problem. Um. <laughs> <laughs> the fact is, he, as I say, he simply gets out there talking before he really figures out, well, now exactly what do I want to say here and what do I want to communicate? And then he gets over the line from what he, what he, he thinks he's going to, and then the next thing we know, he's back uh, apologizing as he's been doing all week. I mean, it's kind of, it's really kind of funny. Because, uh, you know, some of us are not surprised at all by what's going on. And I, I think it it's um, it's really <laughs> too bad for him. But good for the Democrats. <laughs> if they could nominate him, <laughs> if Mr. Mr. Obama would have a heyday, I'll tell you. <laughs> this, 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 would be, this, would, this would might be a Mondale moment for the Republicans if this were to happen. Yes. Uh, 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 let's talk about Paul Ryan. He actually raised the prospect of U.S. defaulting on its debt. Uh, will this reverberate, in your opinion? Absolutely. I, you know, Ed. I mean, I've been involved in in the Congress for 23 years, and and it didn't make any difference whether the president was a Republican or a Democrat, or the Congress was a Republican or a Democrat. None of us ever wanted to to threaten our position in the international global economy. We are the reserve currency. Everybody looks at the dollar as the one stable place. And and this is the first time in my experience, in my whole uh, experience of being in, in politics since 1970, I have never seen people who were willing to play fast and loose with bringing down the entire world economy. Uh, I I just think that you we you know this government shutdown is one thing, but this thing where they're in you know trying to figure out what to do with Portugal and Ireland and Turkey, you know all these countries are looking at our currency, and if you want to have them start using the euro, or you want them to you know go to the yuan and use the the, the Chinese currency as the world's currency then you'll turn the whole thing upside down. The United States cannot default on its debts. I mean, I'm I'm a liberal, okay, but there are some things you do not default on, and this is one of them. No doubt. Congressman Jim McDermott with us here on the Ed Schultz Radio Show. Um, you know, I want to talk about gas and oil for a moment. Think, sure. pro- think Progress uh, caught Eric Cantor on camera yesterday assuring commodity traders that the GOP will try to rein in the CFTC and also that it will try to control the Dodd-Frank law, which, of course, is, by the way, the law of the land. I mean, I think this is a hell of a story. You, you, you've got Eric Cantor out there assuring those commodity traders that a political force, the majority in the House, is going to do everything they can to keep the CFTC at bay which, of course, is really the only ruling uh, entity that could have an impact on gas prices immediately in our country if they were to install uh, instill position limits. Well, what, what, what's your take on all of this? Well, I think that you, again, they, the Republicans have drunk the Kool-Aid of the free enterprise system to the exclusion of, what, of anything that's good for the ordinary people. And once they do that, you you simply are willing to uh, throw anything uh, away just for making money. 
And what happens to the ordinary people in that is of no consequence to Mr. Cantor. He could care less what happens to the American consumer at this point. When you're making those kinds of statements and you're you're talking, you know, let the derivatives run and do all this stuff and just let her rip why you simply have given up on worrying about the American people. Pretty interesting uh, dynamic that's playing out right now. It's I mean, scary. It, it is scary, and uh, it's it's a cultural struggle, is yes, what it, it is. is. And and I I think that the people uh, at some level understand that, but they're confused because they think, well, surely the government is trying to to look after my interests. But when you look at what's going on, you have to say to yourself. Uh, these guys will do anything for a profit, and, and whatever their their uh, people in in uh, who've given them money say, well, that's what we're going to give them, whatever they want. And I, I just think it's it is uh, unbelievable in in terms of what's going on in this country. You know, over on the Senate side, they had this gang of six, and uh, Coburn walks out of it because he wanted to cut 130 billion dollars in Medicare. I, I mean, it just signals to me. There really is going to be no common ground found on any of this. It's an ideological, cultural struggle, and it's a power game at this point. We're either going to going to destroy the institution that has been so successful for the American people over generations, um, or we're going to let it function the way it has been so successful, or we're going to change it to a voucher system. And uh, I, to Newt's defense, in a very roundabout way, he used the right word, radical. It is radical, and the budget is radical. And, Very radical. And 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 Newt uh, was looking at that 80 percent number, about mm-hmm. how 80 percent of the American people don't want to change Medicare, Medicaid, and he thought he wasn't going to get any blowback on that. And lo and behold, uh, it, it's uh, the crazies have come out of the tree for it and just attacked him. Mm-hmm. And and so, what do, in your opinion, Democrats need to do in the wake of all of this turmoil that's going on over there? Well, the president has used a phrase I like, which is "act like adults." I think that there are, there are some things that are tough to do, and there are things that need to be done, and we just got to keep moving forward and showing the American people that we will be responsible. And at that point, I think the president. Uh, has the strongest backing possible in in facing this whole crisis, uh, and and I think that if we do that, uh, the next election will be very positive for us. I just think that the American people are not they're not stupid. They sometimes don't understand all the nuances, some, but they begin to get the picture. And I think that that our job is to not back down, not play games with these guys, not act as though you can have everything for free, because you can't, but at the same time, we have to be responsible. Congressman, great to have you with us. Thanks so much. Sure thing. Jim McDermott, Washington, here on the Ed Schultz Radio Show. You don't got no lady fingers, buzz buttles, snicker bomb, finger blasters, gut busters, zippity doodads, crap flappers. You're listening to a rewind of the Ed Schultz Show. Happy Independence Day.